Hey guys, it's Jason with JW Classic VW and welcome back to the vlog. We got a lot of new people in the channel, so if you're new to the channel, this is Goose, my 1956 oval window ragtop, and her engine, the General. The General is being a little bit of pain in the butt. <laughs> More specifically, the carburetors on the General, and if you've ever dealt with dual carburetors on a Volkswagen engine, you know that you're going to be having pops and spits and all kinds of other issues <laughs> with your carburetors until you upgrade to fuel injection. Someday I'll be doing that. That's not today. So we're going to be looking at some troubleshooting techniques and trying to figure out what could be causing issues with, well, in this case, my number one cylinder not firing. So let's go to the board and take a look, guys. So there's three main systems you want to look at when it comes to troubleshooting issues like this, for instance. Fuel, spark, and air. Those are the main things pretty much with any car if it's not running right, right? <laughs> Combus com internal combustion engines, fuel spark air. So with the fuel system itself, we're going to look at fuel pressure because specifically with Weber carburetors, you need to have a certain fuel pressure around two to three PSI is where you want to be. That's why I have a fuel regulator on my system because I don't always trust the, I have a Carter electric fuel, uh, fuel pump and I don't always trust that that's going to be exactly where it needs to be. So they recommend that you put an inline uh, fuel pressure regulator, which is what I have on here. And right away, we can go ahead and disregard the fuel pressure as being the issue because I only got one cylinder that's got problems. So that's not going to be what it is, but it's one of the things you want to look at when you are troubleshooting. The next thing is fuel filter. It could be clogged or you could have uh, problems with your fuel filter. We'll be replacing the fuel filter on this system uh, after I do the, the uh, Weber upgrade kit that I'm going to be doing. Part of like part of the, uh, the process on doing this kit is I'm going to go ahead and just do that because if you haven't seen it already, check out the video up in the corner over here on the fuel tank center unit that I put in. I drilled a hole in there and some debris got in there, so there might be some crap in my fuel filter, so I'm going to go ahead and replace it. Uh, carburetors. That's, that's like five videos in itself. <laughs> carburetors going to have uh, jetting issues, you can have uh, a problem with your, your idle jets, your main jets, your your uh, air correction can be off. This kit that I got from CB Performance on upgrading my carburetors comes with new jetting. We're going to go ahead and kind of uh, discuss where we're going to moving from, what my current jetting is, and what I'm moving to with this uh, update kit. Spark. I've got a new distributor. I've got the Magnus Spark 2, so that's not what it is. The spark is fine because I pulled off that number one spark plug and it shocked the crap out of me. The spark is good. <laughs> plug wires, you could have a bad plug. I'll let you guys know already, I've already replaced the plugs on that side and re-gapped them. So spark plug and spark plug gap is super important. Make sure that your gap is set specifically for your engine. With the distributor that I'm running, I can run a little bit of a bigger gap up to a, a 30 thousandths gap, which is different from some guys that run 26 thousandths, 28 thousandths. I can run a little bit more gap because stronger spark. Spark, stronger spark means you can cover a bigger gap. And the plugs can handle it too. I got a certain kind of uh, NGK plugs that I'm running that are is, that is uh, recommended by CB for my engine and the heads that I have. Plug wires. You can always have a bad plug wire. They could overheat, get somewhere where they're not supposed to be. There should be some. There could be some false grounding going on. A bad connection with your plug wire and the plug itself. Bad connection with your plug wire and the distributor cap. Bad distributor cap. Not this one, but you could have that as a be a problem. You want to check out your distributor cap and make sure that the rotor is making good contact. You don't have corrosion inside of there. We don't have this problem. It's brand new. Points, uh, points for the guys running the uh, the older engines. If you have points in your in your uh, in your distributor, always check the adjustment on that. Make sure that it's where it needs to be. I think it's uh, sixteen thousandths is supposed to be the gap on that uh, on your uh, your point itself. Uh, an electronic ignition; those things just go out. All of a sudden, you're cruising down the road, and then you're not cruising anymore because the, the electronic ignition is just gone. Always a good idea to carry a spare set of points or a spare electronic ignition or a spare distributor all set up ready to go. Air. Uh, when I'm talking about air, I'm talking about compression. You want to make sure that you have good compression 
And we're going to go ahead and check that in a second, too. That's why I still have the, uh, the carburetor assembly off the number one, two side, because we're going to go ahead and check the compression on that number one cylinder just to verify that we're good to go. This is a new rebuild, so we should be good to go on compression. I'm pretty sure I found out what the issue is, and we're going to be covering that in a second. But valve adjustment. Your valve adjustment can definitely cause issues with your cylinders. You adjust them at the wrong time. You adjust them too tight to where they're not opening up. And your air filters. If you got crappy clogged air filters, you're going to have problems. If you um, have, like we've talked about before, I don't know if you guys uh, seen, the, seen the video where I was talking about how my air filter was too short to run with my velocity stacks, causing a choking issue. So it's like, I fix one issue, another issue comes, but we keep working on it because we love our cars. <laughs> Goose, give me all the problems you want to give me. I love it, man. We'll work on you all day, all weekend. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys, let's go ahead and turn around and get over to the bench and take a look at some of the stuff going on over there. So last night I started working on the uh, carburetors on the one, two side, and I went ahead and finished installing the update kit on the inside of this carburetor. Let me go ahead and give you guys a look. This is what the update kit does. It removes the Venturi and the uh, and the, the center. Hold on a second. Dang it. I don't know if it's focusing. It removes the center portion and the uh, your Venturi. Let's go ahead and this is what makes the, the uh, 44. This is how you get your 44, 40 IDFs because you replace the inside. So I don't know what we're working at right now, but uh, probably closer to a 50. <laughs> And the center bar is installed instead of uh, this bad boy. All right? And then we rejet the uh, air correction and the main jet. Let me bring you over closer to the bench so you can get a better look at that. Okay. So these are the replacement parts here. These are the rails that we install. You can see how they got holes all across them. These are my old jets and I and my my old uh, air correction. And I know you guys aren't going to be able to see what they are, but what we're going from is a 200 air correction to a 1.9 air correction and then on the 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 fuel we're going from a 160 to a 165 to a 165 1.65 yep so a little bit more fuel a little less air is where the uh, correction is being made there. So what I ended up finding wrong is a clogged, or what it seemed to be, a clogged idle jet. And uh, idle jet on the Weber carburetor is right here. That's your idle jet. So that was clogged. I didn't have clear, clear vision through there. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is we're going to go ahead and check the compression on the cylinder anyway, because I want to kind of find out where my compression is sitting. And then we'll go ahead and install the carburetor back in there and just kind of start it up and see what she runs like. I know that uh, this is just going to have one side done at this point, but I want to kind of make sure that it fixes the problem. So let me get this gasket off of here, this old gasket. So this is the uh, compression kit we use to test uh, compression on the engine. It's pretty simple. Just hook it up and turn it over. One of the important things to do if you don't have your carburetor assembly off is to make sure that your throttle is open all the way when doing a compression check. Check. So we're going to go ahead and check number one and number two on that side and see where we are. And we're looking for something above uh, 110. I'm looking for something above 110. 
So if the compression ends up being off, then we've got a way bigger issue. So let's keep our fingers crossed at this time. <laughs> that compression is good. Compression's 120, which is definitely good. We got good compression. 120. That's awesome. Oh man, that went right in there. That's awesome. This little kit from Harbor Freight was super inexpensive and well worth well worth having. So we're looking that this one should be around 120 psi. For, uh, for compression as well. Like I was telling you, you want them to be similar or pretty darn close to similar in uh, compression per cylinder. Uh, come on, man. Work with me here. There we go. Let's uh, zoom you guys in so you can see it. Okay. Good, good, good. Hundred twenty, right on the dot. That's awesome. So this this back one here is is pretty much blind, so you kind of just feel for it to tighten it up and stuff. You guys know what I'm talking about out there, I'm sure. Unless you've got those little windows cut in the sides of your engine engine bay, which Goose does not have that. Having that removable deck lid makes a huge difference too. Just having those pins, man, thing is, that's awesome. I love it. I don't have an AM wrench. What I do have is, you know, brake, brake wrenches, brake line wrenches, which uh, I would say are uh, comparable. So these big, big ass <laughs> spark plug wires, I found that putting a slit in the boot really helps out a lot when it comes to getting that thing on there. Or you're going to be fighting with it for the per for, uh, perceivable future. <laughs> so, yeah. it uh, It's not easy, but it's still a lot easier than if you were trying to do it without the slit. Also, if you guys haven't caught one of my previous videos, check out the, uh, the video up in the corner here. Where I actually opened up these cylinder tins to accept the... Uh, the larger boot because that was never gonna happen it was it was never gonna happen with the uh, the stock size because well, it's not stock <laughs> Duh. all right there we go and uh you're just trying to keep air from getting past there there's gonna be some air that gets by because you know it's there's nothing stock about this setup, but uh, let's go ahead and get the linkage hooked up the rest of the way. And uh, let me show you guys uh, what I figured out with the IDA springs, and it's pretty cool, and I think you guys will like it. Especially if you're doing the setup. So, here is the IDA spring, guys, if you haven't seen it yet. It was in the intro. I kind of threw it on the bench for you guys. IDA spring. Way cooler looking. Let's drop you down so you get a better look at what's going on now. Check it out guys. This is how we got that IDA spring installed. I think it turned out really well. All I did was open up this this uh, little bracket that comes in the kit a little bit to be able to accept the spring and now I've got the IDA spring on here and it looks really good. It works well. The return is good. Return is good. 
and that's pretty awesome. That's all I'm going to do today. I'm going to go ahead and save the IDF update kit for the next video. So stay tuned for the next video because the next video will have the install of the IDF update kit in its entirety on the other carburetor. So you're going to want to watch that. Make sure you subscribe below so you don't miss it. Add some comments too below if you want to. It helps out the channel. Uh, make sure that you share with your friends if there's a you think they'll be interested in what they're seeing here and once again thank you to all my new subscribers and this is jason with jw classic vw and oh wait a second so what was the problem the problem was a clogged uh, idle jet clogged idle jet stupid idle jet was clogged they're pretty small the orifice on the idle jets are pretty small compared to your uh, main jet and your and your air correction jet so those hardly ever get clogged but that idle jet always gets clogged Hope you guys like the IDA spring install. Let me go ahead and show that to you guys one more time up here in the corner. So yeah, that IDA spring worked out really well. The kit, it's not too expensive. I think it's a little under 15 bucks for both springs and the little bracket that comes with it. And you can go ahead and adapt that to your uh, CB linkage. I don't know if you could do that with other linkage, but maybe you can. I'm not sure. Uh, once again, thank you to everybody. Thank you to all my subscribers. Uh, make sure you check out some of the other videos because I got a lot up there. And I will see you guys on the next one. This is how you wreck. You know we always gotta bring you that positive vibe music. Positive vibe that you can ride to. One love you. I'm feeling really happy exactly where I stand.